You're listening to Root Lock Radio. Hello and welcome to Root Lock Radio, a podcast for uncloaking, learning, and exploring the tarot cards. My name is Weston, I live in New York City, and I am your host. In today's episode, we'll continue our exploration of the cards of the Minor Arcana by taking an in-depth look at the suit of pentacles. Then we'll talk a bit about tarot spreads and what makes a good spread, as well as how you might go about creating a spread of your own. And then I'll give a demonstration of a spread that I came up with based on the ideas that we've talked about, about the four elemental energies. So let's get started. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Root Lock Radio. of the suit of pentacles are associated with the earth energy and the major arcana card of the empress who's the great archetypal mother of the tarot deck when you think about the cards in the suit of pentacles you want to think about words like grounding and stability and the things that make our lives feel like they have a stable foundation to them and that we can from there thrive in other ways As we look through the cards in this suit, we see how important our work and our physical and material life actually is. The material aspects of our lives is often looked at as something sort of vain or unnecessary and focusing on it is unimportant or somehow shallow, but it's actually really important. If we don't have physical health, a nice home, a decent income, and money to spend, then we're in a pretty bad way and we can't thrive in other ways. You need the earth beneath your feet to be stable first. So the realm of the suit of pentacles is very important as that sort of grounding, stabilizing base from which we can thrive. The same role that our mother plays when we are very young and her body feeds ours and she makes sure that we have this stable base. She's the rock that we stand on until we're able to go off on our own. When you look at the ace card in the suit of pentacles, Again, we're dealing with the idea of initiation or conception, and the pentacle is held by hand from the clouds, and the posture that the hand has around the pentacle, I would say, is a very stable and supportive one. It's really holding the weight of that pentacle in a very stable way. When you look down at the landscape on the card, you see a fertile garden, and it looks very comfortable and lush and inviting. It seems like a really nice place to be. And then, like in a lot of other cards, we see a mountain in the background. In the suit of wands and in the suit of cups, we saw on a mountain or a hill some sort of building that suggested there was a desire to go off and climb that mountain and strive for something. But this mountain looks like we'd rather look at it from afar than go try to climb it, especially the way it's framed in that gate of the garden. So really, this says a lot about the earth energy. And the idea that it likes to stay where it is. And over the course of the cards, we'll see how we have to do some work and leave the comfort zone that this garden represents in order to reap the rewards of the earth energy. So while the earth energy would prefer to stay where it is, once it gets moving and gets working, that's when the payload starts to come in. And as the coin on the card suggests to us, income is an important aspect of this earth energy. So if you pull this card in a tarot reading, it's denoting a fresh dose of that earth energy. So it could be a work or money or comfort opportunity. It's probably not a windfall or some sort of lottery win as the hand from the clouds or the coin might suggest to you, because as in all ace cards, that energy is really unformed. And it's up to you to harness it, direct it, and harvest it, which in a nutshell is the work that the pentacle suit 
asks us to do. If this card were to come up in a situation where you've suddenly come into a lot of money, which it could, you want to look at it as a suggestion to see the money as raw pentacles energy and figure out ways to use it wisely rather than just spend it frivolously. You want to think of it as a long-term security, the promise of the garden that you see in that card. Either way, if you draw the Ace of Pentacles card, you want to think of the long-term vision of stability in the way that a work opportunity can turn into work, which can turn into money, which can turn into material comforts, and eventually maybe even luxury and retirement and relaxation. The Ace of Pentacles card is the promise of that long-term stability if you're able to harness the energy in the proper way. Now the card number two is associated with that keyword of gestation. And on this card, we see a figure juggling two pentacles with the infinity sign around them, which symbolizes that ongoing energy and energizedness that we see in the eight cards. And this really shows us that opposition that the earth energy has to getting moving. The person in this card looks a little bit discombobulated and like he's maybe juggling and doesn't really seem to be enjoying it or maybe doesn't have the hang of it yet. And so there's a bit of a symbology here about the need to make a decision or a need to figure out where you're going to go moving forward, but a bit of difficulty doing so. And because the earth energy likes stillness so much and gestation of the number two suggests that there's imminent movement ahead, there's a destabilizing of the stability of the earth energy through this need need to move forward. In the background of the card, we see these boats on this crazy swelling water, and it shows us just how discombobulating and unsettling and maybe emotionally destabilizing movement can be for that earth energy. So if you draw the number two of pentacles in a tarot reading, it denotes something like the need to make a choice, particularly about Earth energy ruled things, and being a bit plagued by indecision or resistance to this forward motion. So it could be something like when you have that time where you're trying to figure out what to do with yourself next. Maybe you've finished a job or graduated from school, and you just really feel at a loss of what to do, but you know you have to do something. That's sort of the, the energy that this card is denoting. This discombobulation and juggling without having the hang of it. This person's not totally terrorized by the situation, but they're pretty uncomfortable and likely feeling a little uprooted. Now as we move into number three, we see a development out of that energy. So on the Three of Pentacles cards, we see a figure standing on a bench in a church-like building who's very much at work and embodies the development aspect of the three. Now the church-like building suggests the kind of spiritual nature or spiritual fulfillment that good work can bring us. If we're working on something that really speaks to us, it can feel not like work at all and be very fulfilling on a deep level and give you sort of a sense of purpose around your life. Also on this card, we see some other people looking at the plan and they look like they probably are figures of the church, especially that monk-like man. I really don't know what that robe thing is that that other person is wearing, but I would guess that they're associated with the church as well. And these people are holding a plan, it looks like, for the work that the figure in the card is doing. And they seem to be approving of the work that they commissioned him or her for. We also see an upward triangle of pentacles hovering above a downward triangle with a flower in it. And this carving seems to be the sort of artisan work that this person is doing. But when we see an upward triangle paired with a downward triangle, it denotes a balance between fire, which is the upward triangle energy, and water, which is the downward triangle. And so this card is speaking to that balance between action and meditation that we're trying to find. So we've really come a long way already from the two card, and we have this calm, serene, steady, and spiritually fulfilling work that's permeating the imagery of the card. 
So if you draw this card in a tarot reading, it could mean spiritually fulfilling work, particularly when it pleases others. So this idea that through doing something that we love and gaining the approval of other people and, of course, finding people to pay us for it, we will have this spiritual fulfillment that work can bring us. If you draw this card, it could also say something about being commissioned to do whatever your craft is. And of course, any of us that have a specialized craft that we do, it's quite exciting, right, to have someone want to pay us and want us to do that work for them instead of working our service industry jobs or whatever it is we do to make money to try to support that skill. This card can also denote using our specialized skill and the idea of artisanship as well. As we turn to the four card in the pentacles, we see again the structuring of the number four. And what we see on the card now is a lone figure who seems to be very much clinging to these four pentacles. And as we remember from the cups cards, four can sometimes be a little bit more rigid in a negative sense than structured in a positive sense, depending on the energy of the suit. And we seem to see a rigidity in the way that this figure is clinging to his money. It appears that he's in a tall building because he's overlooking the city. And he has very nice clothes on, including a crown. So there's definitely some status and some wealth and some material comfort. But this figure is isolated, right? So this this is about very much an isolated material wealth. And it can be a lot about clinging to your money and wanting to keep things just as they are. When you pull this card in a tarot reading, it speaks of sort of a tight waddedness or stinginess or a clinging to your work and your money, particularly in an isolated way. It can also say something of a resistance to spending or sharing and the idea that you want to keep that money and hoard it to yourself. There's a bit of an insecurity in this card around losing the work or losing the money and not letting that money flow. So in order for money to serve its purpose, it needs to be spent and flow through society and our economy. But the stuckedness of the earth energy, particularly combined with the rigidity of the number four, causes that money to get stuck and for a person to keep it to themselves, and be sort of afraid of spending it. Which is where we get that idea of the stingy rich person. The number five is a number of transition, and it looks quite different from the previous card. In fact, on this card we have kind of exactly what that figure in card four was fearing. So we see two decrepit and destitute figures they're cold, walking through the snow. At least one of them is injured on crutches. And they're basically barely hobbling along. So their physical health is really in disrepair. But there's a bit of a promise in this card. And that comes in the church window that seems to contrast the really depressed imagery in the rest of this card. Much in the same way that in the Five of Cups card, the two upright cups and the bridge across the water gave us a promise of how to get out of the grieving situation. The stained glass in the church window gives us a promise of how we're gonna get out of this decrepitude that we see in the Five of Pentacles card. If you look closely at the church window, which features five pentacles, they're also surrounded by stained glass imagery of the abundance that we saw in the garden in the ace card. So there's a suggestion here that when you're in this decrepit and destitute situation, you can turn to society and its institutions to offer you support when you have nowhere else to go. So there's a bit of a reversal happening, a learning experience from the situation of card four, where we saw such isolation. We learn that in order to be truly secure financially and materially, we need to integrate ourselves into a greater society and understand that society's role is to take care of people who are maybe having a bad moment. So if you draw this card in a tarot reading, it could mean something like poverty or challenges to our bodies and our health, so injury or illness, any sort of thing that takes you out a little bit. And it urges us to seek the help and companionship 
of other people. So we not only see two figures together on this card, we don't see a lone figure, but we also see the promise of society in that stained glass. So it sort of is this it takes a village moment that reminds us that we're all connected and even though a little bit of our inclination around material wealth and money and all those things is to hoard it to ourselves, as a society we're actually supposed to be sharing and taking care of each other and that is what we can kind of see as the promise of this card that gets fulfilled in the next card. So if you look at the card number six, remember six is that rebalancing after the transition. And this is where we see the promise in that five card coming true. A figure is holding the scales, which are a symbol of justice or fairness or balance. And this figure is feeding or potentially giving money to beggars. And it could very much be the same two figures that we saw in the five card. But now instead of walking in the snow, they are in a more comfortable environment and they're being taken care of. So even even though they're still in a sort of decrepit and destitute situation, there's a little bit of promise. And if you look in the background of the card, there's a little bit of foliage there, right? And the garden that we saw in the ace card is that promise of the comforts of material and physical life. And so that tiny little bit of foliage there symbolizes the promise that if we nurture the situation we see in this card, if we continue to take care of this situation, then it'll grow into something self-sustaining. So we can see in this card how if society helps, we can find our footing again. So it speaks a little bit of the necessity and the beauty of philanthropy or the share the wealth attitude or things like social programs that take care of people and help them to get back on their feet. And though the posture here suggests that there's a power dynamic, right? The man who's handing out whatever it is these less fortunate people are receiving is above them. Those scales show us that there's a balance coming back into play here and that by redistributing the resources that this person has he's able to help bring a greater balance into the world of the pentacles so if you draw this card in a tarot reading it's speaking very much of receiving outside help in something particularly in money or material matters or if you have the resources of giving help to those who need it and it can speak to the redistribution of wealth or philanthropy so if you get this card and you're doing pretty well then you might want to consider giving to someone or finding a way that you can help people who are less fortunate than you and it sort of suggests this idea of rebalancing within the class system of redistributing wealth in ways that actually will help to get those that are less fortunate back on their feet. So if you draw this card, you really want to see which side of the situation you're on. If you find that you're struggling, it's asking you to put yourself out there and try to find the help you need and not be afraid to ask for it. And if you are doing very well, it's saying that the right thing to do would be to, to turn around and help the people that need it. The number seven is the number of raw power in the Minor Arcana. And on the Seven of Pentacles, we see a figure leaning on a hoe, which would be a symbol of work and physical labor, and looking at the pentacles blooming in a bush. So the raw power of the Earth suit has a lot to do with work and labor. And what we're seeing here is the promise of that work and the understanding that there is this idea of the fruits of your labor. And that's exactly what this figure is pausing to understand and to appreciate is that if this is one of the people that was in a very decrepit situation before, he's now working hard and maybe not yet at the place where he's getting to reap the benefits of that work fully, but he's starting to receive a vision of those benefits and exactly what he's working towards and what his long-term goal is through this labor. So there's this idea that understanding the fruits of your labor begets the motivation to work harder. And so we have this cycle that sort of perpetuates and grows where we understand the promise of our work and it makes us want to work harder. 
So if you draw this card in a tarot reading, you're going to want to think to yourself that you're seeing the fruits of your labor, even if you're not harvesting them yet, right? You're seeing the promise of them. And your hard work is starting to pay off, or you're seeing how it's going to pay off, and that you will harvest or reap your rewards. So there's a lot of motivation to keep working in this card, and a suggestion that you should pause and take a moment to really reflect on how far you've come and where you're going. And and that understanding that trajectory you're on will bring you motivation because you know that your work will be rewarded. And this leads directly into card number eight, where that motivation is energized, right? This person has an understanding. They have a vision of what their work is going to bring them. So they're really motivated and energized to work hard. And when you look at the figure on the card, you see a person sitting on a bench, just laboring away. He or she is carving out these pentacles, and the idea that there are several pentacles already hanging on the wall and one on the ground suggests that this person has been very productive and is in their workflow and moving right along and getting things done and being very highly productive about it. But we also see that they're set away from society, right? The buildings are far in the background, and there is a path to the building, but it doesn't look like anything that this person is interested in or focusing on right now. So what we're seeing here really very much is the result of that motivation that manifests in the seven card, as well as the idea that productivity can be an inherently isolating experience, and that setting yourself apart from society can be necessary in order to achieve maximum productivity. And so if you pull this card in a tarot reading, it's denoting this high motivation and productivity and working hard and being in the flow of work, but maybe also kind of being on your own and turning away from society and your social obligations in order to have a time of very high productivity because you know from the seven card that it's going to pay off. Now as we move forward here, we're going to see that there's a lot of echoing of the later cards of the cup suit in the pentacle suit, but it's more about physical work and wealth and income rather than that emotional fulfillment. But there's a very similar underlying idea here. Remember in the end of the cup suit, there was an important turning away from society in order to work on your deep emotional stuff, whether it's going to therapy or exploring your own spirituality or figuring out whatever it is you need to figure out inside that will allow you to open up to that deep fulfillment that comes from being with other people. And here's a similar thing where we're turning away from society and turning away from other people in order to be highly productive and to work hard and to focus on our work and that ultimately that will lead to something very fulfilling. But when we turn to the nine card, it hasn't happened quite yet. So again, nine is a number of attainment and reflection. And what we see on this card is a figure in very luxurious clothing in a grape garden. And this suggests very much a life of luxury and wealth. And this person has attained the rewards of hard work. Their hard work has brought them a very comfortable and luxurious situation. And it's almost like it's a return to the garden in the ace card, right? So we've had to go off and work really hard over the series of the last few cards, but the promise of that garden has been fulfilled. However, this figure is a lone figure. We see this person by themselves, which is always something noteworthy in the tarot. And furthermore, they're holding a hooded bird as their only companion, which is a symbol of the idea of captivity and the stuckness that the earth energy can bring even when you are facing success. Typically a bird with its flight represents freedom, but this bird can't fly or see. It's in captivity. So this person is put in captivity by their own success and life of luxury. And it's sort of that idea that money can't buy you love and you can have everything. You can be very, very comfortable 
and have all the luxury that you need, all the great food, beautiful garden, a beautiful home, and a very beautiful, beautiful life. But there's still something missing if you're alone. So this card a little bit echoes that four card again, right? Of isolated wealth. But here it's more of a retirement energy. You've stopped working and you're living this very luxurious life, but you're still alone. So if you draw this card in a tarot reading, it's saying something about the very luxurious energy and potentially comfort and wealth and this leisurely feeling in your life, but also an isolation paired with it. Sometimes the richest people are the loneliest, and that's because they've isolated themselves from other people in the process of making material wealth such a priority. So as we understood in the previous cards, especially the five and six, there's an important aspect of being a part of the fabric of society in the Pentacles cards, and the idea that you don't want to isolate yourself because you're trying to hoard your wealth. And that's even true when you're in a very luxurious situation. Even though you have much more comfort, you don't have that ultimate comfort of people to share your life with. So as we move to the 10 card, where we sort of reckon with the universe, we have a very similar wealth and luxury scene to the previous card. But we have this strong presence of a multi-generational family. And it says to us that wealth and material comfort can bring profound steadiness when it's combined with positive family relations. So we can have this multi-generational feeling of just stability and steadiness when accumulated wealth is the baseline that stands beneath that family. We can see this old man sitting in the corner, and he is symbolizing that positive patriarchal role of the provider. He, he seems to be the source of the material comfort for those younger generations. And his presence both denotes the material comfort and the wealth, but also he has this very rock-like steadiness that seems to anchor the scene. And of course we want to look at the role that he's playing as an archetypal one. It doesn't have to be the old man or the patriarch of the family, or even a family at all that provides this for other people. What we're really seeing in that archetype is just a person, anyone, who provides the material and financial stability for a group of people around them whom they love. So if you draw this card in a tarot reading, it's speaking of that family wealth, of the multi-generational ability to take care of one another, and the solidity or safety net that family can provide, or even chosen family can provide. Because of course, in the modern day, Whenever we see family in the tarot card, we also want to think about how the idea of family has, in many ways, and for many people, been restructured to really just mean the people that they're closest to and choose to spend their lives with. And in this card, we see kind of that the payoff of a life of labor is seeing those later generations flourish with the secure base that you provide them with. And a lot of times, people that immigrate to America say that this is their main motivation for working, is they they want to provide a better life for their children and their grandchildren. So they move to America and they work very, very hard. So if you pull this card in a reading, it, it could be encouraging you to work hard in order to provide for others, or encourage you to align in a way with the people that are close to you and to feel the stability that you can feel when you are all together and providing for each other. It's that ultimate vision that the Ace of Pentacles wanted us to see, is that this deep stability and comfort comes through the combination of material stability and a intertwinedness with other people. So ultimately, the Pentacles suit tells us that we need to work hard in our life in order to come back to that garden. The garden is the promise of the comfort and the stability and the nourishing aspects of the earth energy. So although many of us have an inherent resistance to work 
or a laziness that prevents us from wanting to work. The pentacle cards show us how laboring away at something you love is a very fulfilling thing to do, and the ultimate reward of working hard is a life of luxury and comfort that you share with people you love. And if ever there's a time to truly revel in your laziness, that's probably it. In some of the earlier episodes, I've introduced some tarot spreads for you to practice with, and it's been a little while since we've talked about any new spreads. And I think it's time to start thinking about what makes up a tarot spread, and what exactly is a tarot spread? Of course, there are many pre-made tarot spreads that you can find on your own. If you want to do an internet search for tarot spreads, you'll find guides and resources to give you lots of ideas of different ones that you can use. But you can also come up with your own, and there aren't really any rules around what a tarot spread needs to look like or what needs to be included in it. It's more about your intention in making the spread and what you want to get out of it. If you're trying to understand the narrative that runs through a situation, you might want to use a past, present, future spread or some variation of that. If you're trying to understand what action you can take in a situation, then you might want to consider using the what to hold on to, what to let go of, and possible outcome spread. If you want to consider other people's perspectives or influences on a situation, you might want to draw cards having to do with the other people that are in the situation with you. And just overall, what you want to do is consider what you're trying to get out of the tarot reading and what factors are most important to you in understanding whatever situation you are reading about. So there are a few different ways that you can approach making a tarot spread. But one thing you really want to think about is just in the same way that a minor arcana card is an intersection between the energy of the suit and the energy of the number, the placement that a card lands in a tarot spread is another avenue of energy that intersects with that card. And this further modifies the meaning of the card and what meaning you can discern from that card in this particular tarot reading. So for instance, a card that shows up in the past position has a different meaning to you than it would if it showed up in the future position. Because something in the past is affecting you but is finished and cannot be changed. But something in the future you still have an ability to change or at least influence the outcome of. Which is the reason that I personally always consider a future card to be a possible future or possible outcome card. Because that reminds you that you do have agency and the ability to change something that hasn't happened yet. So you can see that card as either a motivation or a warning, depending on the situation, to help you figure out how to act towards the situation that you are looking into. So any card has a certain meaning that you may associate with it, but that meaning will take on different facets or different ideas based on the position that it finds itself in the spread. And there's also a conversation or a narrative going on across the spread of tarot cards. So you want to really pay attention to how the energy flows through the spread or how the ideas flow through the spread to give you a story or some kind of conversation between the cards about what is happening. One way I like to start when I'm trying to come up with my own tarot spreads is to visualize the situation. So say I'm in a situation where I feel like I have a goal I want to accomplish, but I'm having trouble getting there. I don't really know where to start or what to do, and it, I'm feeling overwhelmed by this goal. Maybe I'll want to pull one card in the position of me where I am right now, one card in the goal that I'm trying to achieve, and then put a card in the middle and call that card the obstacle. And then I can really see the narrative ahead of me of where I am, where I want to go, and what's standing in the way, and maybe that will help me to figure out what I need to do to actually overcome that obstacle and achieve that goal. 
Another place you can look when you're trying to create a tarot spread is within the tarot itself. Because over the course of this podcast, we've been unveiling a lot of the systems that lie beneath the tarot cards and help to determine their meaning, we've seen within the tarot many ways that narratives can unfold that different energies and ideas can intersect with and influence one another, and different symbols and archetypes that exist within the world, all of which we can translate into placements within tarot spreads. So one example would be to look within the major arcana cards. As I mentioned when we were talking about those cards, There are a lot of little three-card sequences that could help you to think something through. So if, for instance, you're in a situation where you feel stuck in a rut, maybe you would think about the Devil Tower Star sequence that we kind of labeled the divorce sequence in the Major Arcana. And you would pull a card that sort of represents the what's chaining you aspect of the devil. And then you'd pull a card of what needs to collapse for the tower. And then you'd pull a card for what is the reward for the star. And that could help you to figure out what you need to let go of and what needs to sort of fall apart or fall down like the tower card. And what reward is waiting for you on the other side, represented in the star card, that will help motivate you to let go of the situation that you feel stuck in. So again, looking in the major arcana cards, there are lots of little narratives happening that might help you to figure out some momentum in how you're going to move forward in a situation. If your intention is a little bit less about moving forward and a little bit more about just trying to figure out what factors are playing into your current situation, right, sometimes we are less oriented towards a goal and more just kind of trying to figure out how to make things that are happening right now a little bit better. For that, there's a lot of cards in the first row, in the first leg of the Fool's Journey, that could be helpful with that. So maybe you want to pull like a four-card spread corresponding with the the Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant, and the Lover's cards. The first card corresponding with the Empress would be about what things are nurturing you right now. And then the second card corresponding with the Emperor could be about what things are disciplining or guiding you. The third card corresponding with the Hierophant could be how is society influencing you. And then the fourth card corresponding with the Lovers could be what is your heart's desire. So there you're seeing these like four different aspects of the situation laid out before you, which could help you to prioritize these influencing factors and figure out which ones are important to you and which ones aren't. And one other place to look would be at the four elemental energies, right? Because each of these elemental energies correspond to very specific parts of the whole picture, right? So the fire is the passion, the water is the deep feeling, the earth is the groundedness, and the air is the intellectual. So again, if you're facing a situation that you want to just kind of understand what elements are at play or what factors are at play, you could draw a four-card spread in the form of a cross that corresponds with each of those elements. So I'm doing one of those as a demonstration right now. What I've pulled for the fire card is the major arcana card, Judgment. What I've pulled for the water card is the major arcana card, the Wheel of Fortune. What I've pulled for the earth card is the Four of Wands, and what I've pulled for the air card is the Seven of Pentacles. So what I want to do is kind of think about how the realms of our lives that each of the elements relate to or rule are showing up in each of these cards. So the first thing I want to notice too is that I've got two major arcana cards, water and fire positions. So we would want to focus on that as sort of, this is where like a lot of the big stuff is happening. So starting with the fire card, I have judgment. And so what that says to me is that in the fire realm, there is a very clear calling happening. Someone feels very driven towards a goal, something that they are just being called to in a big, big way, because that's what the judgment card is, right, is this calling. The water card is the Wheel of Fortune, and the Wheel of Fortune is about the forces outside of ourselves that affect our situations and prevent us from having total control. 
So there might be, in the more deep emotional realm of this person's life, a sort of fear or knowledge of the fact that they can't really control everything. They're not necessarily going to be able to accomplish whatever that goal is that they're so driven towards without the support of the universe. The Earth card, which corresponds to what nurtures and grounds you, is the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands is very much about people acknowledging and celebrating you and your accomplishments. So what, what I'd want to say to this person is that you really need to pay attention to other people's reactions to you. You get a lot of grounding and stabilization through other people accepting and acknowledging your accomplishments. So don't shut other people out. Make sure that you share your experiences with other people because this is going to keep you stable. And then for the air card, I have the Seven of Pentacles. And the air, of course, relates more to the intellectual, the mind. And the Seven of Pentacles is a card about understanding and seeing the fruits of your labor is coming to be. So this card might say that the intellectual part of this person is very tied to results. If they don't see results coming along, then they're not going to believe that any progress is being made. And because that's such a logical way to approach something, it fits well with this air position in the spread. So this person needs to acknowledge that the logical part of them is very results driven and that they need to kind of maybe set some goals for themselves, some very concrete goals, so that they can see and track their own accomplishments and really see the fruits of their labor helping to motivate them to move forward. So overall, this spread, I think, is very motivated, with a little bit of self-doubt in the emotional realm. But as long as they can share their accomplishments with other people, and see that other people acknowledge and celebrate what they're doing, as well as set concrete goals and see the results coming in in a logical way, they will be able to make the most of the situation considering the four elemental energy realms. So basically all I've done here is created a spread corresponding to the four elemental energies and what I know about them, and then read each of these four cards with the realms of our lives that the elemental energies rule in mind. And so if you want to use this spread, of course, go ahead. But you might also want to think about how you see the tarot and different things that jump out to you. And you might be able to come up with some really cool spreads on your own. And if you do, I'd love for you to share them with me. Rulock Radio is a podcast for uncloaking, learning, and exploring the tarot cards. It's written and produced by me, Weston. Music for today's show was provided by Shenandoah Davis and Jure. You can find information about both of them in the show notes. On the Rulock Tarot website, you can find information about each of the cards discussed in today's episode, as well as previous episodes. You can find that at rootlocktarot.com slash podcast. Also on the Rootlock Tarot website, you can now sign up for my email list. I'm brewing up some ideas for online and in-person classes and workshops, so if you're interested in that, please sign up to stay up to date. I promise I won't crowd your inbox with a bunch of unnecessary emails. No one likes that. The sign-up form is at rootlocktarot.com slash contact. You can also follow me on Instagram at rootlocktarot. I'll always announce those kinds of things there as well. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time for Root Lock Radio.